Here is part two of Greg's 99 Dakota RT suspension and brake upgrade on Racer X Garage. All right, so if you're new to watching our videos or you just haven't seen this yet, this is Greg's 99 Dodge Dakota RT. And it's pretty much all stock until what we did on the first part of this video, or the first part of the series, I should say, um, where we installed DJM lower control arms that are lowering control arms, so they lower the truck three inches. Uh, it had a set of lowering uh, springs in it, but we didn't like the way it rode um, It just wasn't quite right So if we put new lower control arms in it new shocks new springs and new upper control arms in it as well with you know all new ball joints uh, tie rods and um, Sway bar inlings, which we don't have that hooked up yet. because We're not quite done but a lot of this was uh, Basically done because Greg wants to upgrade the brakes and there's a way to upgrade your brakes on your 99 Dakota, I think 97 to 99 Dakota, maybe even newer, uh, to a 2003 or 2004 Dakota brake, um, which is a whole lot better. So he decided, let's go down that avenue so and show you guys how we do it. So if you have a 97 to 2002 truck, it's gonna come with some pretty dinky brakes. And let me show you what I mean by that. These, right here are the stock Dakota brakes. Now I don't know the size offhand and I kind of think that's irrelevant at the moment because I want to show you what we're upgrading to. This is the single piston caliper that comes on his RT. This is the same size caliper that they pretty much used through all out of the 90s even on some full-size trucks. Braking in the 90s for the Dakotas in the early 2000s it's just just not fantastic but in 2003 they upgraded it and they went to a bigger caliper which is actually a dual piston caliper it's a bosch caliper um and it's a lot lot bigger a lot more room uh for <laughs> squeezing and uh, just a whole lot better system and when they did that they also went to a larger rotor and that's what this rotor is right here and it says front passenger side um, because it's drilled and slotted from power uh, what's, what's the name of the thing power power, power stop power. brakes let me flip this over just to show you guys some some comparisons when you put this rotor <laughs> on the top here you can see that there's about half an inch on each side so this is this rotor is almost an inch larger so not only do you have a better caliper you got a bigger rotor. You can have more options for rotors, like from Power Stop. And if you look here, it's much beefier than the old Dakota kind of dinky rotor. So a lot more, a lot more everything. And it's pretty simple to do. What you're gonna need to do is go to the junkyard and find a 2003 or 2004 Dakota that has these brakes so it has the dual piston caliper much larger and grab the spindle now this spindle is pretty easy to identify because it has the larger bolt holes for the caliper bracket here's the old spindle right here and this is 97 to uh 2002 and they've got these little dinky holes here so if you're looking at it and somebody's already taken this stuff off and you see these small holes this is the wrong one you don't want this one you want the one with the larger holes here so got to get the spindle um and make sure you get the spindle the caliper bracket bolts which we actually have back here somewhere you got right there so grab these bolts because when you buy the bracket when you buy the calipers the brackets will come with it but you're not going to have these bolts so make sure you get these bolts 
from there, pretty much everything else you can buy new. We already went ahead and bought uh, new hubs because the old ones are kind of junky. So we swapped these out already. Greg bought a, you're going to also need a new brake line for a 2003 or 2004 truck with these brakes, which you could get from a junkyard if you want, but you could also buy that brand new. And then Greg bought the calipers new, the pads new, the rotors new, and uh, pretty much that's kind of all you're going to need. So I'll put a part list up right after this little portion here so you guys can see what you need to do. And we're going to get to working on the truck. Quick note before we get too far deep in this, you will need a special tool. It's kind of a special tool. It's a socket. It's, you know, not too special, right? But it's a 35 millimeter socket. I doubt y'all can see the writing on that. But in order to do the hubs, you're going to need it. So just, just ahead of time, if you need to know what special tools you might need, 35 millimeter socket. Okay, we're gonna start this off by removing the brake lines. Greg's on the passenger side over here. On the frame rail, there's brake line. And uh, it's a 12 millimeter on one side, and maybe a, what was the other one, a 9 16 So it's kind of weird that this truck's got a bunch of mis mismatched SAE versus Nine. other or things. Five eights. Five eights. But anyway, you can see it down there. And then I'm gonna work on this side. You wanna hand me those guys? Where'd they go? Total of the five eights. All right. But on the driver's side, we're gonna need to get some access, which means I need to pull this inner fender well out at least some. So there is a bunch of push pins. One's right here. Try to get it out. There it goes. And then try to get some of these other ones out too. Man, these are never easy. Let's go. Another one out. There we go. Wow, I think that one, both of those broke. Cool. That's good. Well, it broke the, the plastic clips. All right, well, there's two clips up here that I messed up, but that one pushed through, so that's good. And the other one's over here, that one pushed through as well, so we can replace those. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this dude out of my way. He's got an extra zip tie leg now. There we go. Oh, you got access? Yeah, I got access now. Now we need to just see up in here. All right. So up in here is the brake line for the driver's side. Man, that's crazy. You can see the movement from the LED light on the camera. Yeah. All the flashing yep. or whatever. Yep. Alrighty, let's try to get this dude out. Sweet. Yeah. Now Greg's over there. I don't know what he's doing. Like 
Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, you need to leave that nut in place. Why? Because it's you don't have to pull it off. What holds this on is a clip. Oh, this one's all done. I don't know if I can get this clip off from this angle, but we're gonna try. Yeah, I guess you could pull that off. Yeah, it's probably easier. Because it's hard to get to. So we're gonna pull this nut off back here that holds this clip in place and then just drag it all down and move the clip out. Here we go. Okay. And that entire brick line is out. Huh. <laughs> well, now we're gonna get that clip out. I wish I didn't have to pull the bracket out, but hey, it was pretty convenient. So. so, if your truck isn't as dirty as this one, it might not be that big of a deal. May have to tap this one with a hammer. Yeah, this one's almost as bad. It's actually okay. There it goes. goes. There. There. Now, it should just come straight up. But I am going to clean up this uh, bracket. bracket. All right. So. I don't know if y'all saw this, but I'm showing you again. I kind of put it in place so I know how to clock it. And I just put it through the bracket and then made sure I lined it up and then put the clip on in there. And now I should be able to get this brick line in place and hopefully start it without too much trouble. Don't force it. Oh, wow. <laughs> what? Uh, it threaded right in. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, that you can't get much better than that. <laughs> Don't over tighten that fitting either. Just no. you just want it snug, you know. There you go. All right. All right. Now I need to get these bolts started for this bracket for this brick line. Okay. So we're cutting threads. Get the other on there. There we go. Yep. So there you go. Next one is too low. We back this one off just a little. You can probably loosen that one up. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to. Where is the other one? Ooh. Man. All right, we got it there. Got that other bolt in with some finesse from the hammer. And now it's time for the rotors. If you look on here, front driver's side, stick it right there because of the direction of the slots so there is that all right so rotors on Greg's putting the caliper bracket on if you look there's a couple 21 millimeter bolts right mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and there so we're gonna get that tightened down and then the rest of it's kind of just like a brake job, so we're gonna yeah. bleed the calipers once we get everything done. Yep. Greg's just putting the hardware on. One. Two. There you go, just kind of clips in place. You can see it down there. Make sure it's not hitting the rotor. I mean, once it's centered with the pads. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yep. All right. All right, dude. Here are some pads. There you go. So real quick before you throw it on there, when you're putting these on side to side, make sure you see that the the bleeder screw is up. 
but they're keyed. So oh, they're, are they? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Screw. Shouldn't take much. Nope. Now we just need the crash washer. They're in the back. Yeah. You hook up the brake light or the <laughs> brake line. One of these on each side. Right here. Yep. And then go through there. Need it. Yep. Or we gotta hmm? put one on. Uh... You, you gotta put one here and on the other side yeah. in between so, there. So go through that. Yep, like this. There you go. <laughs> Ooh, running out of light, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, daylight's going. All right, Greg's just gonna snug this dude up. Here we go. And just a little bit Just more. a quarter, man. Kind of stupid angel bolt. Yep. Cool. Probably like that. Yeah. And there we go. Man, that looks so awesome. We gotta take a picture of that. All the new hardware. Man, it's been a long day, but it's it's been worth it. It's been worth it. Yep. All right, we're gonna that one knock out the other side and then bleed them, and then we'll bleed go for up. a ride tomorrow. Yep. Oh, uh, don't I look beautiful? Yeah. It's time to bleed the brakes. There's not that much left to do here, and I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. You can get this little self bleeder from O'Reilly's. It's basically just a tube. It's pretty cheap. Soda bottle I have here. I drilled a little hole in it. And this is how I bleed brakes, bleed brakes by myself. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it with Greg. And it's gonna be pretty simple, I believe. So let me get set up here and we'll get started. So we're starting at the passenger side of the truck because this side is further away than the driver's side we're also just bleeding the front because newer vehicles have divided cylinders we should not have introduced air to the back this rubber thing here I'm gonna put on the bleeder screw right here can y'all even see the bleeder screw yeah you can and I'm gonna make sure that I keep this above the brake system I use this again by myself and here's what we're gonna watch we're gonna watch this line to make sure that when Greg slowly presses the pedal we're gonna watch brake fluid and air come out of here and we're gonna keep watching it until it stops flowing air I hope you guys can see it we have lost our light we've only got this artificial light but it is what it is Greg uh, Go ahead and, and just slowly push it to the ground right. and then back up. All right, I'm going to push. All right. We're already seeing air. Did you see all that air? Heck yeah. And then when you get to the ground, just let it back up slowly and do it again. All right, I'm going back up. All right, I'm going to push again. All right. Let's see. Some more air. Perfect. All right. And you want to make sure it's submerged because when he when he lets off the pedal, it's going to kind of suck in from the other way. We're so we're still getting air out of it. Lots of air. Go again. Oh, starting to lose air now. Now what I'm going to watch is I want to watch this too because it's. Gonna, it's gonna eventually start filling up with fluid. There it is, right there. Watching it go down. Going up. All right, coming back up. Do it one more time, and I'm gonna check the fluid. Oh yeah. So I still see some air bubbles going through there. I'm not sure what's gonna show up on camera. Hold tight. What you got? Now? Yeah, you can just let it. Let it. I'm just gonna check the fluid level. Excellent, man. I'll, uh, do it two more times. All right, so pushing. he's pushing. There is no air bubbles coming out of here, just fluid. In fact, I can see the nasty old dark fluid right there coming out in a cloud. Yeah. Do it two more times. Let's just make sure we're good. There we go again. 
You can kind of see that cloud coming out. Got some air bubbles coming out. There we go. Next time, hold down, hold, hold, yeah. hold it. Yep. Push it. All right, we got some more air bubbles coming out now. Bingo. Very good. Do it again. Yeah, a little slower though. There you go. Definitely still got some air in the system. I'm watching all those bubbles come through. All right. Oop, I think that's it. I'm watching one little air bubble go. Hold it down. When you're down. And I'm just gonna tighten it up. And this side should be done. Pinch it so you don't spill it. Let it go into there. Now you should have a little bit more fluid than you started with. I'm gonna go do the other side and then we're gonna be done. Both sides are beautiful and done. Greg's gonna throw the wheels on now. And we're gonna be thin for the night. And we'll go for a drive tomorrow. Show you guys how it works. I'm just as dirty as I was in the first part. Again, same day. <laughs> but uh, this was not near as bad as Sonoma or my Dakota. So we'll take it. See you in a little bit. Wait, let's give you a preview. DJM suspension, two inch lowering control arms in the front, three inch blocks in the back, 99 Dodge Dakota RT stock springs. It looks great. However, it needs an alignment real bad and that's not something we do. So you're gonna have to do the same thing if you go down this path. So get it as close as you can and take it to the alignment shop because that's about what we're gonna do. But I didn't want to leave you guys without checking it out. Woo, looks good. Time to go for a quick ride into Dakota with the new brakes. Uh, it still needs an alignment, so we're not going far. But we're gonna check them out. It only took us about five times to bleed them. Well, I'm just now realizing that uh, I forgot that our schedules didn't align and we didn't shoot an outro for this video. I was gonna take some beauty shots of the Dakota and do some cool stuff with it and it just didn't work out. But I did want to let you guys know we fixed that little issue with the noise. Uh, that was the rotor hitting the backing plate. We just kind of bent the backing plate where it was contacting. Easy fix, so that's taken care of. And then Greg went and got the truck 
aligned uh, at the shop and uh, they were able to get it inspected and it drives so much better than it ever did before. It rides like a dream compared to just hitting the bump stops all the time and getting jarred around, you know. It wasn't, it wasn't a pleasurable ride previously and now it's pretty good. Um, also, the brakes are night and day difference. If you have a 97 to 2002 Dakota, do this upgrade. I highly recommend it. It's going to be worth your time, your 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 parts, your, your everything. It's just worth it. And even if you don't do the suspension upgrade, you can do the brake upgrade pretty reasonably priced, especially if you find a good donor truck at the, at the junkyard where you can grab all those parts. I just want to thank everybody for, you know, spending your time watching this. Uh, your time is more valuable than anything, and we realize that. So thank you guys so much for coming along. If you like what's going down here, please consider subscribing. If you like Ram Chargers, if you like Bel Airs, Novas, Sonomas, Typhoons, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, I'm hoping to get with some friends here and, you know, help work on their cars. If you like this kind of stuff, please consider subscribing. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up. I am enrolled in sick week. I got registered, so I'll be going down to Florida in February to uh, take the Dakota and um, actually might be competitive this year. And uh, Keith is going back down again, so we're gonna be making another series of uh, a drag and drive event, and I can't wait. So make sure you stick around for that. I wanna give you guys a little preview of what's to come. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to show up on camera, but ooh-wee. I'm going to show you guys how to take this paint and make it look like this. And uh, it's going to be worth it. We got some stickers and t-shirts on the website. If you want to check that out, that's Racer X Garage. Um, and we've got some more coming. I've got some, uh, some ideas, so I hope to bring that to you all soon. So. Again, thanks for your time, and you know the deal. Until next time, y'all be good.